Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a bit of an update on the channel uh, and on Grand Prix Vegas. So I want to do a whole weekly series before Vegas on testing out popper decks. It's really the only thing I'm excited for. For GP Vegas, not a big modern player, not a big sealed player. So uh, those are the two events that are going on. Uh, so I am excited about the, the popper championship, which will be held, I believe, Saturday uh, at Grand Prix Vegas. Now, as many of you know, my focus has been tuned to mainly arena lately, but before then it was popper and I am still a huge fan of the format and I think it's in a healthy place at the moment. It has a self-regulating metagame. Uh, right now, the metagame is looking different than it even did uh, a month ago with the black-blue control, just not even a percentile, or maybe just a few percentiles of the meta. Uh, so let's leave it open for, I think, a whole... Uh, if people are going to metagame at this particular Popper Championship tournament for a deck like Bogle. So let me just give you a bit of an update about where we're at before that. So uh, again, I apologize for not being able to do the week uh, before Grand Prix Vegas. I was going to just grind out some games. I was going to grind out some games today, but actually our Friday Magics were pretty full. We did have an, a, a Popper event at five o'clock and we have uh, a full house right now for, at least for our store, of modern going on right now. So this is just in between rounds. I'm 3-0 with Soul Sisters, by the way. But anyway, I'm playing modern again. Uh, I'll, I'll play from here again, now and again at the store. However, I don't really enjoy it on MT Joe at the moment. I still think there's a lot of decks I'd rather not play against, or uh, it's just not my cup of tea with a lot of the solitaire decks and the non-interactive decks. But anyway, uh, so I wanted to try to do a full popper series. Unfortunately, my grandfather passed away, so I've been out of town for a funeral. And now we're finally getting back into town and have to prepare now for <laughs> GP Vegas, which I'm actually going out of town to hit like Powell for th three days and then to Grand Prix Vegas. So we're going to be arriving at Grand Prix Vegas on Thursday. So if any of you are you know, friends of the channel that want to meet up, uh, we're going to try to figure out some just just be follow me on Twitter and I can give you updates uh, for those meetups. And maybe we can play some games. Maybe we can go out to eat, that type of thing. I always love to meet the fans and just hang out at Grand Prix Vegas. That's that's more of the, the enjoyment I have rather than playing in the big events. However, back to Popper. Popper is, again, like I said, let me show you the metagame. And this is why I think Bogles is in good place. I'm pretty sure that's the deck I'm going to be taking to the GP Vegas uh, Popper Championship Tournament. So you can see... We have the Is It Delver, Stompy, Tron, Karathoboros, and Inside Out in the top five, really rounding out anything that's above 5% of the metagame. So again, though, this is quite low in percentiles for particular decks. Now, there's a lot of, every time after a Pro Tour, I believe is when they do these wipes of data. Uh, if you go back about a couple weeks, though, this is this is starting to be the trend of decks that are, are seeing the best finishes. Uh, I would say that this this red deck, this burn deck, is also starting to get more popular as Dominaria did add the uh, one two. The, if you have two spells in the in the graveyard, the haste creature, it's a two two with haste. Um, then it, it's made this a little more explosive. So we're we're starting to see a little bit resurgence of burn, and then burn does tr traditionally well against decks like like the Tron or Kadatha Boros. It sometimes can do well, uh, depending on if there's they have a lot of sideboard hate for it. It can race like Inside Out and is it Delver and does very well against decks like Elves if you can take care of their life life gain. So uh, I think that this is on the rise. So that's another justification in my opinion for Bogles. And Bogles actually does pretty well against Inside Out if you can get above that life the Inside Out's capable of doing. And a lot of people don't know Inside Out is a combo deck, but it can only do a a finite amount of damage before they run out of gas. Now, if they can chain off gushes, so it's, you can't give them the ability to build up, build up, build up because by chaining off gushes you can theoretically bring four cards back so that's a lot of damage to, through the the combo however that's not realistic to have more than two gushes happen in one attack phase and so a lot of times you can get above the amount of damage that the inside out can do to you uh so this deck was on the rise but i think people are figuring that out and putting a lot of ways to just gain substantial amount of life uh makes it very difficult for this deck uh to have those explosive finishes uh, anyway, but going to these the major top four, the ones that do have the big meta share, and you commit Mono Blue Delver in with Is It Delver because they attack the game very similarly. I think all of these are 
easy matchups for Bogles. Bogles does extremely well against Is It Delver and Mono Blue Delver if they aren't running the Curfews. Curfew is a card that's pretty decent. I don't usually see any curfews in these lists. Like if you look at this one, he's pulled up, no curfews. Uh, so it, it's just got a glaring hole for decks like the Bogles because you can, you can put out that one drop. They can't counter everything after that point and you can start outclassing what they are doing. Uh, and the Stompy. Stompy is a very easy matchup for Bogles. Bogles traditionally does well against any creature-based deck. You can just get bigger than what they're doing. And yes, this can explode through what Bogles are doing, but if you run matches up against each other enough times, then the Bogles, of course, is going to have the higher win percentage versus this particular deck. They do have cards like Gleeful Sabotage in the sideboard. I think a lot of them are still running Gleeful Sabotage as it's a good card against Affinity. Uh, but you might see some of these Stompy decks and some of these other decks start to cut these cards uh, to give them even more action uh, versus the Delvers. You can see that this is back to the full Scattershot Archer uh, and gut shot list in the sideboard rather than being uh, more versatile against a, a number of decks. So the gut shot two is very good versus tireless tribe. Uh, and you can see that's where the meta has shifted over towards is Delver and inside out taking those decks down. Uh, this, these particular Tron decks have, there are a lot of different ways to build them. This looks like this is a stone stone horse dignitary is the flavor of the week right now. So keeping people from attacking that one is a bit difficult for Bogles, other than eventually they can get uh, run out of the amount of times they can run the Stonehorn Dignitary. Like they can get it to where you can flicker it and then get the flicker back and just do it indefinitely. But Bogles can race this and you can also put in cards that, uh, well, against Moments Peace, you do have like the Flaring Pain and whatnot. So uh, this, the Stonehorn Dignitary definitely is like a, a version of Tron that is pretty tough. Usually Tron is is different though, but it does look like that's going to be, yeah, here's a different one. Okay, so it's just compiling all these together. This one with just the Dinrova, uh, Dinrova Horror is a lot easier uh, than the than the Stoneheart Dignitary, Dignitary Blink. So I would say that maybe, I don't know how what the percentage of Dignitary decks there are. Uh, Bogles matches up pretty well against all of these. Kadatha Boros, Bogles, that's one of Bogles' best matchup against Kadatha Boros. Very, very tough for Kadatha Boros to beat it as it, everything has hexproof and they don't run a lot of cards. They do have access to cards like Celestial Flare. However, this particular deck does not look like it is running any Celestial Flare. They also have protection, uh, access to Circle Protection Green. That can be a bit of an issue, but uh, it's just too many cards that they, you have to dedicate for too many different decks for the sideboard. And also looking that Bogles is just under the radar. This Bogles is the type of deck when it is under the radar, when no one's prepared for it, that it, it can win large tournaments. And again, it doesn't look like anyone has been playing it because it just had such a miserable matchup versus blue black control and black control and even some of the white black control decks that we saw get very popular about a month ago. So like I said, the popper format has a very self-regulating meta. So anyway, let's head back over. I'll give you the deck tech for the Bogles deck that I like. So I like going the heavier on the Heliod's Pilgrim, no Aura Narlids. I think Aura Narlids is a go bigger card, which is a liability. Uh, a lot of the times there's another way to build like an Enchantress type deck with the Umbras uh, to throw on either the Avamaya Enchantress or the uh, Aura Narlid. However, I think it's a lot more of a glass cannon shell and uh, the removal is actually, any removal is actually really good against them, like Journey to Nowheres are everywhere, uh, Vapor Snacks, things like that. You can get blown out uh, by those particular cards. Uh, this one, with all of your cards having Hexproof, I think, again, matches up a lot better. From these tempo-based strategies, I put it even Kadatha, Boros, or uh, they call it Boros Monarch, uh, Scred, Delver, uh, regular Delver, uh, all those are more tempo, and Bogles is the perfect deck versus tempo decks because you have that hexproof card that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger that gets very very tough for them to to race uh or out temple what you're doing so the just the decks you're running 18 lands we do have some ways to help us against those black blue decks that do have you sacrifice with the colony gardens uh, as a two of uh this particular one is running an ash barons i like that the ash barons in one planes as it allows it to find the one plane um, if, and that's, and then thin out the deck at that point, you're not running any evolving wilds or like a lot of them will run the guild gates plus the blossoming sands. Sometimes that can be pretty slow. Uh, then we have the, all of the one drops. We have the glade cover scouts and the slippery bull goes a play set of both of them. And the other hexproof card is the Solano ledge walker. So this is a one, one and can't be blocked except by creature with flying. It also has the hexproof. So there's our 12 
creatures. The rest of our deck is going to be ways to pump them up. You have the Ethereal Armors as a four of, the Cartouche of Solidarity as a three of. This card I'm actually less impressed with the, the this used to be one of the better cards to run four of as you were trying to protect yourself against Edict type effects. However, with those decks on the seeing less and less of the meta, I don't think the Cartouche is that necessary. So I think a three of is the right uh, number. And this is the card that you're going to be sideboarding out uh, very often versus many decks. In fact, most of those decks that you saw, I end up citing out the Cartouche of Solidarity. So again, this might be a card in the future that just gets the cut. Uh, Abundant Gross and the Utopia Sprawls are just ways to add auras onto the field for Ethereal Armor and the other one being the Ancestral Mask. So the Ancestral Mask can get plus two plus two for each enchantment on the battlefield. Reads your opponents as well in case they are running any sort of enchantment. And then the, the other pump up is going to be Rancor. Rancor plus two plus zero and trample. And again, it's just going to make these, these creatures very evasive too with the trample damage going through. And then last but not least, we have the Armadillo Cloak. This is the card that allows you to race basically any of the other life uh, creature attacking in type decks. So against Burn, you, you stop at Armadillo Cloak. It's very, very tough for them to come back at that point. We do also do have a one of Cartouche of Strength, which allows you to fight any pesky creature. It, sometimes you do find like uh, some cards you do want to kill. Uh, with a, it's, The Trample is the... the card on here that is actually more or the, the ability on here that's more relevant giving a creature plus one, plus one trample and again fighting something is also pretty good if you have like something like armadillo cloak uh to gain that lifelink off of that so the other little thing i do like is he has pilgrim as a two of a lot of these have been a one of this is a card that i've even thought about possibly cutting cartouche of solidarity because it kind of plays a similar role as a cartouche of solidarity it gives you something that can be sacrificed and then then you can uh, hook up the R to one of your hexproof cards for an edict. Uh, so we still do have a decent okay matchup versus edict type decks. All right, so onto the sideboard, I added another lifelink. Most lists only run one. I think this is going to be very good versus the Scred Delver and the Burn matchup, as well as the uh, mono red uh, aggro based decks, whether it be goblins or just the kind of red stompy type decks. And it's not that great versus some of the other aggressive decks, but it's really good versus inside out. Because again, if you can get a creature that's, that attacks in for a few turns, um, you can get above where it's comfortable for inside out, where they have to have like multiple gushes and they have to start digging for gushes before they can go off. And a couple swings in, you can be above the life total that they can actually theoretically kill you. So I'm going to run two of those in the sideboard specifically for the burn in inside out the crimson acolytes another card this be is like your 13th hexproof card versus burn and scred delver it's another one that cannot be targeted uh because that's protection from red don't worry about the other another creature gains protection from red this is relevant versus electric a little bit it if you don't have your creature uh, like sometimes you have such a rancor that's on it, like a Solana ledge walker, but that doesn't come into play too often. Again, though, it is just a blowout though. If you are going against a red deck, as you can then just protect things from that on out. Um, again, lightning bolts can't hit your hexproof cards. It's just electric is overloaded. It gets around it, but most of the time your cards are above that at that point. We're running two dispels. Dispels are, are pretty decent versus a variety of decks. Anything instant speed. We'll usually bring these in versus uh any, any card that we know is just a blowout like the. The thing is, Dispel might, I might end up changing this last minute for Negate because Gleeful Sabotage is a sorcery. And that card is one of the cards that we do want to uh, counter at least one of the, 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 uh, the copies. Uh, however, in, a Dispel is very versatile uh, in this deck as, as well. We're going to run three natural states. This is another thing that I like because I think it's, it's good versus affinity. I don't really care about Ancient Grudge as much as destroying uh, key artifacts or enchantments, I think, is, is key for this particular deck. The Young Wolves usually just come in versus Edicts, as it's another card that has to be killed twice with an Edict, and it can protect your other cards. Flaring Pain just helps you versus any of the, the Moment of Peace decks, as you can make uh, your damage can't be prevented and you can go through. Electric is your key card versus Elves. It's a tough matchup, though, but it's also any other Swarm deck. This allows you to overload and just blow them out. And Gut Shot's really in here for the inside out, just to, again, slow it down. And it's another, another versatile card you can bring in versus a variety of decks, like Delver decks, anywhere from Delver to inside out to uh, Elves 
uh, to, ki to kill some of those key elf cards. So that's the gist of Bogles. Again, I, I think I was going to run, I'll probably bring goblins. I'll probably just kind of uh, test the field on Friday to see what it's going to be. Just do some scouting to see what deck I think is going to perform the, the best. I'll bring probably most of the popper decks. Uh, so if you do need a deck to borrow to, by the way, just come see me and I'm, we're, we're pretty sure if you're trustworthy, we can, we can let you borrow a deck uh, for the popper championship there. So again, looking forward to the um the grand prix vegas check out twitter i'll try to give updates of what we're doing and i'd love to get involved there with everyone else if uh if if you're going to be in gp vegas definitely let me know and we'll we'll yeah we'll we'll plan some things this has been kevin with rogue deck Builder. you can find this list at roguedeckbuilder.com if you're interested in buying the list we do have full popper decks up at roguedeckbuilder.com slash store uh have basically all the popper decks in stock and it's still a format that I highly, highly suggest you, you check out. I've had a lot of fun with it. If you have a local game store, try to uh, convince them to run it. It's, it's very accessible for people to get into Popper uh, rather than other things. Anyway, we'll see you at GP Vegas.